Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history and I love history, and if you love history too, this is the channel for you. Of the many British colonial wars of the 19th century, the Second Boer War, fought between 1899 and 1902, was by far the longest and most deadly. The Second Boer War had roots that went back hundreds of years and was emblematic of the wars of colonial ambition, but it was unique in that it was one of the first truly industrial wars, utilizing many of the technologies and tactics that would define the coming century, and the Great War, which by then was already on the horizon. For many Britons, their romanticized vision of empire and the Pax Britannia passed on December 15th of 1899, at the end of what was bleakly called the Black Week, at the Battle of Colenso. It is a battle that heralded the end of one era of warfare and the beginning of another, more terrible era. It is a battle that deserves to be remembered. The first European exploration of South Africa occurred when Portuguese knight Bartholomew Diaz rounded the southern tip of Africa while searching on behalf of King John II of Portugal for a sea route to India in 1488. The first permanent European settlement on the tip of Africa did not occur, however, until a resupply point was established by the Dutch East India Company in 1652. The base soon developed into a settler community, which then grew. The settlers easily dominated the local population of Khoikhoi and San people, whose populations were devastated by smallpox brought by the Europeans. By the 1790s, the population in the colony was estimated to exceed 60,000. Great Britain took the colony during the Napoleonic Wars in 1805, as the Kingdom of Holland was allied with the French. British rule led to conflict with the Dutch settlers, who referred to themselves as Boers, the Dutch word for farmer. To escape the rules of British dominion, most especially the abolishment of slavery in 1833, the Boers continually moved inland in a migration called the Great Trek, eventually establishing two Boer republics, the South African Republic and the Orange Free State. But the discovery of diamonds and then gold threatened the Boer republics, as thousands of foreigners immigrated to work the mines, and ambitious politicians looked to unite East Africa under British rule. After a brief conflict in 1881, all-out war came in October of 1899, when negotiations over voting rights for so-called Uitlanders, Europeans who had immigrated to the Boer Republics to work in the gold and diamond mines, turned into a conflict over troops on the border. The Boers mobilized quickly, their army made up of a population skilled at riding and shooting. Boer militias from the South African Republic and Orange Free State could muster as many as 40,000 men. Their army was well equipped with modern weapons, as South African Republic President Paul Kruger had imported 37,000 of the latest German Mauser Model 1895 rifles and some 40 to 50 million rounds of ammunition, as well as dozens of modern artillery pieces in anticipation of war. They invaded the British colonies of Natal and Cape Colony against British troops that were scattered and largely unprepared, besieging the towns of Ladysmith, Kimberley, and Mafeking. The British responded with significant reinforcements, under the command of General Sir Henry Redvers Buller, a cavalry officer who had won the Victoria Cross for bravery during the 1879 Anglo-Zulu War. His first goal was to relieve the besieged towns. Despite having been defeated by the Boers in the brief First Boer War in 1881, the British entered the conflict confident. Their army was larger, and they thought more professional, having honed their skills in over a century of colonial warfare, against what they saw as a rabble made up of farmers. But they underestimated the accuracy of the Boers and their Mauser rifles, and their tactics failed to anticipate modern developments like trench warfare and innovative Boer tactics. The British suffered a set of stunning defeats the week of December 10th to the 15th, 1899. On December 10th, a force under Major General William Gattaker was thrown back trying to take a railway junction at a place called Stormberg after attacking Boer positions without proper reconnaissance. The British lost over 600 soldiers captured, while the Boers took insignificant losses. The following day, a British force of 15,000 was defeated trying to relieve the town of Kimberley in the Battle of Mockers Fontaine, taking over a thousand casualties in the face of entrenched Boer positions. But the worst was yet to come, as Buller himself, attempting to relieve the siege of the town of Ladysmith, would lead a force of 21,000 to face the Boers on December 15th, as he tried to cross the Tagala River near the Natal province town of Colenso. While outnumbered, the Boers had prepared to defend the river crossing, digging over three miles of trenches. Buller had limited reconnaissance and was convinced the Boers had withdrawn from the area. 
As Bowler's force moved towards the town and the river fords, the 5th Irish Brigade on the left flank was misdirected by their guide. Left massed up at a loop in the river, they were decimated by Boer rifle fire, taking over 500 casualties in just a few minutes. In the center, two batteries of field artillery set up too close to the enemy, misjudging the range of Boer rifles. When the entrenched Boers opened fire, most of the horses and crews were killed in a matter of minutes. Volunteers were able to fight out and retrieve two of the guns, but took heavy casualties. On the other flank, a detachment of light cavalry was pinned down by Boers occupying a strong position on a hill. They might have taken the position if Buller had sent reinforcements, but shaken by the losses on his other flank, Buller refused to send in more troops. Despite some success in the center, Buller, stunned by the heavy losses, ordered a withdrawal, leaving behind ten guns of the field artillery. In the end, Buller's force took over a thousand casualties, while the Boers lost only eight killed. The humiliating defeat, so soon after the losses at Stormberg and Mockersfontein, marked the low point of what came to be known as the Black Week. Tactics which had been successful against colonial opponents, often armed with spears, proved to be disastrous against an army armed with modern magazine-fed rifles. The Boers, while not a professional army, were individually expert marksmen. They were accustomed to feeding their families by hunting. The British Army would continue to take terrible casualties throughout the Boer War as their leadership adapted very slowly to a new form of warfare. Redvers Buller was eventually replaced in command by Field Marshal Sir Frederick Roberts, whose own son, Lieutenant Freddie Roberts, was one of those officers who died trying to retrieve the guns at Colenso. Eventually, the British prevailed as the Boer could not match British numbers and British command slowly developed more effective tactics. But even after the Boer army was defeated in the field, the war continued for another two terrible years of horrible and bloody guerrilla warfare that devastated the Boer population, both civilian and combatant, and shocked the British public. But the importance of Buller's defeat at Colenso was not so much in the context of this war, the last great colonial war of the Victorian era, as it was for the wars of the coming century. The British started the Second Boer War using antiquated tactics, moving in formation, attacking in close order, firing by volleys in line. They had a modern magazine-fed rifle, but they hadn't developed tactics to take advantage of its accuracy and rate of fire. Cavalry was still seen as a shock force to use an attack, an idea that was proven to be outdated in the Boer War, even as the mobility of mounted infantry was shown to be valuable. And Buller's own defeat proved that many of the officers who had been successful in colonial warfare were ill-suited to modern warfare. During the Second Boer War, a whole new cast of British officers would arise, many of whom would have leadership roles in the wars of the coming century. It was because of Buller's defeat at Colenso that the British Army modernized its training, its tactics, its equipment, and its leadership. In many ways, it was because of Colenso and the Black Week that the British Army was prepared for the coming First World War. I'm the History Guy, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. And if you did enjoy, then please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, which is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, or would like to suggest other topics for the History Guy, feel free to write those in the comments section. I will be happy to respond. And if you like five minutes more of forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.